Hello everyone, my name is Mini Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about classical approach for determination of output and employment for UGC net. And this is part of macroeconomics. And classical economists mainly include Adam Smith, Ricardo, J.B. Say and J.S. Mee. And classical economists believed in existence of full employment. Classical economists believed in existence of full employment. What is full employment? Full employment is a situation where all people who are searching for job can find a job at existing wage rate. Means, as we know, there are so many people who are searching for job. If they are able to find a job at existing wage rate, it will be called full employment. And classical economists believe there is existence of full employment in economy. And they also believe in laissez-faire policy. What is laissez-faire policy? That means there is no intervention of government in economic activities. Now we are going to talk about assumptions of this approach. There is full employment in economy. Laissez-faire policy that means no government intervention in economic activities. A closed economy that means there is no international trade. And perfect competition in labor and product market. Classical approach mainly divided into five parts. Sales law of market. Labor market equilibrium and real output or we can say that determination of employment and real output, wage price flexibility, interest rate flexibility and money market equilibrium. One by one we discuss about each. First of all we are going to talk about sales law of market. This law is given by J.B. Say. According to this law supply creates its own demand. Supply creates its own demand. That means whatever goods we will produce, it will be demanded, there will be no overproduction. Whatever goods we will produce, it will be demanded, there will be no overproduction. But how? As we know, producers create supply of goods and services, means producer uh, produce so many goods and services. For this, they make payment to factor of production in form of rent, wages, interest and profit. And this will be called income of factor of production. With this income, they will buy goods which are produced by producer. Or we can say that with this income, uh, they will do demand for goods which are produced by producer. By this way, we can say that supply creates its own demand, means whatever goods we will produce, it will be demanded, there will be no problem of any overproduction. Now we will see labor market equilibrium and real output with the help of this diagram. In this diagram on x axis, we have labor and y axis, we have real wage rate. LD is labor demand curve. Labor demand means amount of labor that employers want to hire. Labor demand means amount of labor that employers want to hire. And labor demand and wage rate have an inverse relation. That's why slope of labor demand curve is downward. But why labor demand and wage rate have an inverse relation? Because if wage rate will high, labor demand will less. On the other hand, if wage rate is less, labor demand will more. Obviously, at less wage rate, employers want to hire more employees. And LS is labor supply curve. Labor supply means number of labor that are willing to work. And labor supply and wage rate have a positive relation. That's why you can see slope of labor supply curve is upward. Why positive relation? At higher wage rate, more people will willing to work. At less wage rate, less people will willing to work, obviously. And E is equilibrium point. At this point, you can see labor demand is equal to labor supply. This E point will be called full employment point or we can say this E point will be called full employment situation. At this E point, those people who are willing to work can find work at existing wage rate. And according to classical economists, economy always in E point means economy always in full employment state at long time period. So E is our full employment point. According to classical economists, there is existence of full employment in economy. For a short time period, it can be possible we can divert from this point. But at long time period, economy always remain at this E point. Suppose at short time period, we divert from this point. 
now labor supply is more than labor demand here you can see labor supply is w1k and labor demand is w1a labor supply is more than labor demand if supply is more than demand obviously employer will reduce the wage rate as wage rate will reduce we will come back at this e point again where labor demand is equal to labor supply suppose at short time period economy divert again now labor demand is more than labor supply you can see labor demand is w2 k2 and labor supply is w2 a2 labor demand is more than labor supply in such a situation wage rate will increase we will come back to this equilibrium point e again where labor demand is equal to labor supply so we can say that short time period economy can divert from this e point but at long time period demand will become equal to supply and we will achieve at this e point and e point will be called full employment point now we will see level of real output at full employment situation in this diagram on x axis we have labor and y axis we have real output this oq curve shows our real output q is output and is number of labor here you can see as we are employing more and more labor our output is increasing but at diminishing rate because after certain time period productivity of labor will fall so oq is level of output at full employment level now we will see wage and price flexibility according to classical economist wages and price are flexible that means we can change wages and price according to situation of demand and supply as we know classical economist believed in full employment according to them if there is more unemployment in economy that means um, labor supply is more than labor demand in such a situation by cutting in wage rate we can achieve full employment point but how by reducing wage rate we can achieve full employment suppose there is more unemployment in economy that means labor supply is more than labor demand so employer will reduce wage rate as wage rate will reduce that means cost of production will reduce if cost of production reduce prices will reduce if prices reduce demand for product will increase if demand for product will increase that means we will increase production if we are increasing production that means we need employees we will hire more employees if we are hiring more and more employees that means employment will increase in economy if employment is continuous increasing after certain time period labor demand will equal to labor supply if labor demand become equal to labor supply that means we have achieved our full employment point so here we see how reducing in wage rate we have achieved our full employment point and classical economists believed there is a full employment in economy at long time period any fluctuation is temporary for short time period but ultimately we will achieve our full employment point according to classical economist next is the interested flexibility according to classical economist our interested also very flexible that means we can change our interested according to situation of saving and investment and classical economist believed saving always equal to investment if saving is not equal to investment then by doing some adjustment with interested saving can become equal to investment in this diagram you can see on x axis we have saving and investment y axis we have interest rate this i i is our investment curve you can see slope of investment curve is downward but why because interest rate and investment have a inverse relation at higher interest rate people will take less money from bank as a loan for investment purpose but at low interest rate people will take more money from banks as a loan for investment purpose means investment and interested have a inverse relation that why slope of investment curve is downward but slope of a saving curve is upward this s s is saving curve but why because saving and interested have a positive relation at high interest rate people will deposit more money in bank at low interest rate people will deposit less money in in bank means people will save less money in bank so e is our equilibrium point at this equilibrium point you can see saving is equal to investment and according to classical economy saving always equal to investment now suppose interested increase from or to or1 at a higher interested saving will more than investment you can see saving is r1a but investment is r1k at a higher interested people will save more money in bank but will do less investment because now investment become very expensive you know because of higher interested so at higher interested saving will more than investment as a result interest will fall and we will come back to this e point where saving is equal to investment 
Now suppose interested fall from OR to OR, OR to OR2. When interested fall, investment will be more than saving. You can see investment is R to A1, but saving is R to K1. Because at a low interest rate, people will invest more money and will save less in bank. As a result, interest rate will increase and we will come back to this E point where saving is equal to investment. So, according to classical economies, saving will always equal to investment. If saving is not equal to investment, then by doing some adjustment with interest rate, saving can become equal to investment. Because our, invest, our interest rate is flexible, we can change our interest rate according to the situation of saving and investment. Now we will see money market equilibrium. According to classical economist, money supply cannot affect our output, but can affect our prices. According to classical economist, money supply cannot affect our output but can affect our prices. To explain this concept, they use equation of Fisher quantity theory of money. Equation is mv equal to pt. Here m is money supply. Money supply means total amount of money. For example, cash, coins, balance in bank account, etc. V is velocity of money. Velocity of money means number of times money move from one person to another person. For example, you have 100 rupees. You give this 100 rupees to someone and he buys something from this and give this uh, 100 rupees to someone else. He further buys something from this and give this 100 rupees to someone else. And uh, velocity of money means number of time this 100 rupees note will go in circulation. And uh, P is prices, T is transaction of goods and services. In this equation, we assume V and T are constant, V and T will not change. But as money supply change, price will also change. As we know, M is money supply, P is price. When money supply increase, price will also increase. When money supply fall, price will also fall. In this diagram, you can see on X axis we have prices and Y axis we have output. And this Q, Q is our output curve. And MV is our money supply curve. Our initial equilibrium point is E. And initial price is OP1. You can see as money supply increase from MV to MV1, our price is also increase OP1 to OP2. So we can say that as money supply will increase, prices will also increase. But our output will remain constant. You can see yeah, this QQ is our output curve which is constant. So, according to classical economists, money supply can affect our prices. As money supply will increase, prices will also increase. But it cannot affect our output. Our output will remain constant as money supply increase or decrease. Now, we will see criticism of this theory. Underemployment. According to classical economists, there is a full employment. But according to Keynes, there is not full employment. There is underemployment. For example, someone working as a part-time but he wants to work as a full-time employee. It will be called underemployment. And according to Keynes, there is not full employment, there is underemployment. Refutation of sales laws. Keynes don't accept the sales law of market. According to sales law, supply creates its own demand. But according to Keynes, supply not always creates its own demand. Sometimes overproduction, sometimes underproduction. Uh, automatic adjustment is not possible. According to classical economist, if labor demand is not equal to labor supply, then by doing some adjustment with the wage rate, labor demand can become equal to labor supply. Similar, if saving is not equal to investment, then by doing some adjustment with interest rate, saving can become equal to investment. But according to Keynes, these kind of automatic adjustment is not possible in economy. Saving equal to investment. According to classical economy, saving always equal to investment. If not, then doing some adjustment with interest rate, saving can become equal to investment. But according to Keynes, saving not depend on interest rate, saving depend on income. Similar, investment not only depend on interest rate, it also depend on marginal efficiency of capital. But classical economists ignore these kind of concept. Next criticisms are rejection of quantity theory of money. According to classical economist, money supply can affect prices. But according to Keynes, there is not always necessary money supply will affect prices. Sometimes not. Ignore speculative demand for money. Classical economists don't talk about speculative demand for money. This is also very important. As we know, Keynes in his theory of interest clearly talk about speculative demand for money. 
स्टेट इंटरवेंशन इज एसेंशियल अकॉर्डिंग टू क्लासिकल इकोनॉमिक्स देर इज नो नीड ऑफ गवर्नमेंट इंटरवेंशन इन इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी बट अकॉर्डिंग टू केंस गवर्नमेंट इंटरवेंशन इज मस्ट विदाउट गवर्नमेंट इंटरवेंशन यूर इकोनॉमी कैन नॉट ग्रो लास्ट रोंग एजम्पन ऑफ लॉन्ग टाइम पीरियड क्लासिकल इकोनॉमिक्स बिलीव्ड इन लॉन्ग टाइम पीरियड बट अकॉर्डिंग टू केंज हु सी लॉन्ग टाइम पीरियड theory must be applicable in short time period not in long time period so this is all about classical theory of uh, output and employment for uh, ugc net i think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video bye take care